All right, what's going on? It's Bobby Skinner talking Giants. This is your Week 11 New York Giants offensive line report, a victory. Uh, Want to talk about JMS, John Michael Schmitz. Uh, this was the most disappointed I was him in the game, right? Like, he's gotten through games like where they haven't been clean, but, you know, a couple bad reps. This one in pass protection was where I was the most disappointed. So we'll, we'll get to that second. But I also don't want to, just because it's not great competition on the edges for Andrew Thomas, I don't want to not appreciate him. So we're going to start off with Andrew Thomas on a, a quick segment. Just just going to go through five of his pass protection plays. Like and subscribe. But you know what? I probably don't have to tell you that if you're watching the Week 11 all offense, offensive line report. But if I do, like and subscribe. So we're going to start with Andrew Thomas. I mean, just lockdown, right? One, two, three, we're in our spot, right? Where are you going to go? We get hands on him. We keep our feet moving. We pull our hands. We reload. Keep our feet moving. We're going to work him around the corner. All right, he realized, oh, I'm not getting around the corner. I'm going to go back inside. Bam. We're here. We're ready to go. Our quarterback wants to scramble outside the pocket. Okay, cool. I'll seal him off. And I'll put my shoulder into him and put him on his ass. How's that? It's just a beautiful ball. I know, listen, there's a sack given up on this, and we're actually we're going to talk about this on the John Michael uh, Schmitz part of this. But that's great ball from Andrew Thomas. Next play. Just lock him down. All right, this is a third and long. I think a third and 20 even. Good footwork. We let him bring the punch. His hands are high. We bring him low. So we have a high hand, low hand, work him around the corner. Again, he wants to counter back inside. We're here. Good ball. Next play. Just killing the will out of pass rushers. Again, keep our feet moving. Now we got hands locked on in these pat shoulder pads. Grip strength, right? He's to see him trying to work all these hand moves, trying to do nothing. No, we've got grip strength. We got him locked down. Next play. Gonna work our circle technique, right? We have our hands out here, right? And he's thinking, okay, I'm going to go and swipe those hands. Nope, we're going to pull the hands. We're going to punch. High hand, low hand. Keep your feet moving. Bam, good stuff. And then this next play. I mean, this is just, this is good on Pew too, but Thomas makes this happen. And again, another third and long too. Third and 13, right? We don't overset. He shows inside move. Bam, we're aligned center perfectly, exactly how we want. Perfectly. You put it in Justin Pugh's lap. Pugh's got a good understanding of it too. We come off, and I mean, look at this. Look at this pocket. Look at this vision for the quarterback to hit the throw on this on the dig on this dagger console. So, again, not a long segment on Andrew Thomas, but just wanted to give him his due. Some great ball. All right, so let's go into JMS. And again, we've, we've done a lot of JMS segments on these, right? And you see some really good reps, but you see some things that he needs to work on, right? And he's a rookie. This was the first game where I just like consistently just was not really happy with the pass protection reps, right? Where guys kind of took advantage of his hand usage um, and were like using what JMS does against him. Um, and also some stuff like, you know, not keeping your feet moving and, you know, it leading to leading to sacks. So we'll get into all of it. But there's also some good stuff in the run. Uh, but there were this was the game I was looking at him as like a barometer of, of what to, you know, expect going forward. And, and this was probably like the least happy I was with him. So let's get into it. First play, again, this is against Federian. And again, he wasn't going up against Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne most times. Most times it was Federian Mathis, another defensive tackle out of Alabama, but still. So, lining up with the nose tackle when he gets clubbed. So, again, it's good to start, right? Like, we're, we're here. We got the head-to-head -head relationship. 
but we're getting just too reliant on our normal punch, right? And when that happens, when you just get reliant on like, hey, I'm going to snap the ball and be quick with my hands, well, other guys are going to line up at nose tackle on you, and they are going to use that against you, right? Because I'm like, okay, well, uh, he's he's coming early, so I'm just going to attack his shoulder and rip with this and then swim and then break that, you know, swipe that with my left hand. I'm going to swipe his left hand and go again. And then also you got to have your feet ready to go. Like when you got to be ready to go, man, you got to be ready to plant off this right foot and mirror with him. Even if you do lose the hand battle, like that's the most important thing is just standing in front of your guy again versus the, uh, the nose tackle He's going to get shocked and swam. Fidarius just gets up those top of those pads, shocks where JMS, and this is where he usually is good. Be ready for that, right? Break those hands off. Like take your hands inside and literally, literally pop them out. And he does do that on, on a lot of reps, but on this, and he gets shocked. And he gets that grip and swam, right? And he's got forward lean gets swam feet aren't moving got to keep your feet moving and again you're turning around looking back at your quarterback which is never good next play a little bit of a high punch and gets that meat hook against him this doesn't happen very often but it did happen on this right our hands are high and especially our right hand is coming in high. And that's allowing this defensive tackle to be able to get leverage and wrap that arm around the back and get underneath you and raise your pad level and just drive you back and turn your hips and fight through you. And we have chaos all over the place. Because Bredesen gets beat. Also, this is a bad double team by Thomas and Bellinger. Also, Tommy DeVito, get rid of the ball. Next play, what do we have? Again, like this is like, again, not, so we're not going against the nose tackle. You see like good hand usage, but it does get used against him, right? And this is where like where we talk about Andrew Thomas so much. It's like, hey, he, hands are, are like, he knows that defense alignment, that's what they do. They use your hands and arms against you. They use your punch against you, right? So, you've got this three technique right here. We're doing a half slide. We're setting towards him. We're going to protect Bredesen's inside. Right? And that's what happens. Hey, now he is, he is your responsibility now. Bredesen's responsibility now is it goes to this 50 if he works inside. So, he throws out that punch. And immediately, Mathis swipes that off, right? Like, where are we throwing this punch? We're throwing this punch at his at his opposite shoulder, right? Where where are we aiming at this? And you just make it easy for him to, to just swipe that off. And a good job like working to get into his chest, but then you gotta you gotta you gotta extend. When you don't extend, well now he's able to rip at that back and get you falling forward, right? Again, where are we punching? Where 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 are we punching right here? And then this is the play where he gives up a sack. This is this is the one that's the most frustrating because this shouldn't have happened, right? Like that's all good hand usage and stuff by Mathis that we went through. This one flat out should not have happened. Right, again, you are in the half slide. Same exact thing as last time. You got to you gotta have some more urgency. Get hip to hip with Bredesen, right, to be here. But you're good, right? We're good, we're good, we're setting. Bam, we're on him. We're good. We can rework our hands, but we're getting help from Bredesen. Keep your feet moving. But the feet don't keep moving, right? Watch the feet. Just staying stuck in the mud. 
right? We're good. We got good hand usage right here. But he's able to break that arm off. And your feet are stuck in the mud. And he's running past you for a sack. All right. And again, this is probably another example of DeVito get rid of the damn ball. But this didn't need to be a, this didn't need to be a sack allowed on JMS, right? This is going to be a sack because DeVito doesn't get rid of the ball. But that you got to keep your feet moving on that type of stuff. And here you see, like, this is probably his best rep in pass protection, but even then it's not like a, a great rep. Right? But you do, he is able to re-anchor versus, versus this bull, right? Again, setting. He's inside. We land. We get our punch. We extend. We work that hop step, right? Bam. Hop. Re-anchor. We've got extension with our arms. Now we're obviously getting help from Bredesen too, but we're fighting. Right? He's going to work hand moves, right? He goes to work hand moves. Keep that hand off of you. So, again, just, just struggles in the uh, pass protection game that I didn't like. Now, these next two plays, and I'll actually let them both play. From broadcast, they look bad. In my mind, I'm like, I want to see what happened with the guards on these plays because it's JMS doesn't lose reps like this in the run game. And what I was guessing from watching broadcast to me was exactly right. That these plays, even though you're going to see, oh my gosh, JMS, how does that happen? And then you're going to see towards the end of the game, you're going to say, look again and say, oh my gosh, JMS, how does that happen? JMS, bad game in the run game. Disagree. Disagree. If he's jumping gaps, Pew has to give more help on this. You give no help on this, and JMS has no chance. Right now, I would like a better first step on this. I'd like this first step to come back here. But again, you... You really get no piece of him, and you're... He gets upfield. The JMS has no chance. He has no chance except for just to ride this, and hopefully there's a lane for Saquon to cut up, and there's not. And then we're going to look at the exact same thing on the opposite side. I understand that Bredesen's mindset is, hey, I got to cross his face, so I got to get out and go. Right? But you got to be in a little more control. You got to be a little more in control if you're going to be the first point of contact. Because instead, he's upfield, his hips are square, and again, JMS has no shot. He has no shot except to just get in his hip and try and ride it to the sideline and hope that there's a lane for your back to cut up on. Right? Just just get up and ride this. And unfortunately, there are two tackles for a loss is because the guards didn't do their job very well in those plays. Um, next play, what do we have? Some good stuff. Good combo. Moving the moving the gap of 91. I think that's John Ridgway out of Arkansas. Wish the Giants would have signed him, to be honest. He was he was available. Uh he was he was waived by the Cowboys and was available. I liked him a lot more than DJ Davidson. But anyways, JMS shoulder to shoulder. We want to get his helmet on this side of Pew. We want to move him into that gap. We do. And then we come off to linebacker. Now again, this is a critique I've had from JMS at Minnesota is to to get to that second level a little more in control, right? Instead of just going. Play with this a little more posture. Swing your hips around. And 52 is not getting on the tackle. But still a, a, a pretty a pretty damn good job on this combo block. And then the Giants ran a bunch of pin and pull. Which they haven't ran a ton of this year. Um, and I thought JMS did pretty damn well. Like found work on these plays. Right? I love the effort on this. Even though it doesn't really change much on the play. But again. So we're going to have Thomas is going to pin down. Bellinger's going to pin down. Shepard's going to pin down. Good block by Wandale on this. Right? And then JMS. Get out. Move. Turn your head. Fine work. Bam. Get your shoulder into him. Good job by Pew. 52 wants to flow. Bam. Saquon puts his foot in the ground. Upfield. Good play. Pin and pull again. This time to the right. 
Not as good on the front side, so Jameis has to work a butt block. Right, so Bellinger's cutting right here. Now, personally, I would I would let Bellinger get out on this and have Shepard pin down. Um, and, like, it, I know it's a lot different with tight ends, but I would have liked on this is to have Shepard pin down, Tyree pin down, and Bredesen pin down, and then you get out and move Bellinger and JMS, right? Because instead you're getting this guy in the way. Jameis has got to hop over a player. Right? So, like, Shepard surely is able to pin, would be, probably be able to pin that down. And then you don't have Bredesen out here. But you get Bellinger. But again, you get, you get, simi you get similar results anyways. Good job. Get fine work. Box him out. Box him out. And then the last play, some more pin and pull. I just put it in there because they didn't. Uh, this is the other time they ran it. Not a great job by Tyree Jackson on this, even though you do get him outside. On this lead toss. Good job, just get kind of getting in the way for JMS. So. Hope you guys enjoyed this offensive line report. I know it's not like the flashiest one for one of the Giants, only, you know, one of three wins they had this year. Um, but I did want JMS. This was he was one of the main guys I was watching in this game. And then obviously I wanted to give it to Andrew Thomas a little. I thought about doing the, the the nine sacks, but it's like I didn't want to sit here and just go. Oh, that's the quarter. Like that to me, that's boring. Yes, Tommy DeVito gives up a lot of sacks. We all know. We'll talk about it on the film review a little more. Appreciate you guys. Let's go big blue.